One of the great things about cult films, whether it's sci-fi, horror, action, or whatever, is that you can find ones from just about anywhere on the planet. Yes, whether it's from Japan, Britain, Korea, Italy, or some country called Canada, cult cinema truly knows no boundaries. Well, today we're going south of the border all the way down to Mexico with a little film called Night of the Bloody Apes. Night of the Bloody Apes was made by Mexican exploitation auteur René Cardona, who also directed such movies as Santo and Dracula's Treasure, The Batwoman, and Wrestling Woman vs. the Aztec Mummy. Alright, I don't expect you to have heard of any of those movies. I just thought I'd mention them to show off my incredible knowledge of Mexican cult films. And also the fact that I looked at Renee's IMDb page. Anyway, this movie is one of Renee's most infamous due to its plentiful nudity and gore. You see, Renee was smart enough to know that anybody going to see a movie called Night of the Bloody Apes would probably expect to see some sleazy content. Unlike some movies. No bad news for any foreigners watching the movie. It hasn't even started yet, and already it's promising Montezuma's revenge. It's also filmed in Eastman color, which I believe is the type of red paint they used for the credits. Hi there. I just came to wish you luck. Aw, oh, that was sweet of you. I'm going to put on the mask. You can help. Oh, I'm sorry. It looks like I put in Mexican Catwoman by mistake, which ironically would be less of a mistake than watching the real Catwoman. This is Lucy, an aspiring wrestler, and the movie opens with one of her wrestling matches because... Uh... Mexico? You know, all things considered, opening a movie with a two-minute wrestling scene isn't that bad. At least they're not driving. Yeah, that's right. I just made fun of Bigfoot twice. What? The movie sucked. Anyways, que vas a ser, hermano? Now you may be wondering how all this wrestling fits into the main plot of the film. Well, don't worry, because it doesn't. Oh my god, the green wrestler was really a woman the whole time! You know, I will say this about Mexico's wrestling industry. They really don't seem too concerned with the athlete's safety. Calm down. She's knocked out. Don't worry about it. She's probably just bleeding internally, maybe some minor brain damage, no big deal. While we're on the subject of sports, it looks like hunting's a lot different in Mexico too. I didn't even know they were allowed to shoot orangutans. Oh, my mistake. It was a mighty peaking man. This is Dr. Crawlman, who's taking care of his son Julio, who I think is being played by Mexican Tony Curtis. Yo soy Spartacus. Julio's dying of leukemia, but Crowman's devised a way to save him by transplanting a gorilla's heart into his body, which will... cure his leukemia? I feel that the blood from an animal as powerful as that of a gorilla might annihilate whatever is causing the cancer in the blood. Okay, admittedly I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure that's not how that works. You're going to transplant the hearts. Julio's for that of the gorilla. You know, this actually isn't that far-fetched. When I was a little kid and had chicken pox, all I had to do was kill a homeless guy and take his small intestine. Good as new. Hang on a second, what did he say there? Transplant the hearts. Julio's for that of the gorilla. Julio? <laughs> okay, I see the dub actors weren't exactly on the up and up when it came to their Spanish. Ah, oh, Mexican film, huh? Yeah, that's that country where they eat tortillas and drink tequila, right? So after a successful stock footage transplant, Julio manages to pull through. Master, look. It's working. It's a miracle! Literally, scientifically speaking, this really should not have worked at all. Oh hey, more wrestling! Because that's what people expect to see in a movie called Night of the Bloody Apes, right? I've always said Halloween would have been a lot better if it was more like No Holds Barred. I gotta say though, that man Lucy's fighting is clearly in a different weight class than she is. Hi, Kiba. Well, looks like Lucy didn't win this match, but thankfully she has the love and support of a good man to help her through it. I couldn't help it. I got very frightened when I threw her out of the ring. So we're back there once more. Now forget it. I mean, you almost kill one person and suddenly it's a big deal. Do you know what riders do when they get thrown from a horse? No. They remount in the act. Well, not if you're King Louis IV of France. Because he died after falling off his horse. 
Thought I was gonna make a Christopher Reeve joke for a second there, didn't ya? Oh, jeez, there's more wrestling? Okay, I get it, the movie's Mexican. Why don't you just have him do the hat dance while you're at it? I should probably mention, Lucy's boyfriend Arturo is a cop who's investigating the missing gorilla, orangutan, peeking man, whatever. So I guess this subplot does connect with the main story. Kind of. The chief wants to see you right away. What, again? No, what can I say to Lucy? Gee, I don't know that you're a cop and you have crimes to solve. It's me, Arthur. Not now, I'm taking a shower. Open the door. Yeah, we're almost half an hour in and there hasn't been any nudity yet. But it turns out Lucy doesn't take Arturo's police duties very seriously. Because every time you invite me out to dinner, you stand me up. You never have a night free for me. But that's duty, my love. My love, my foot. You think more of your chief than you think of me, don't you? Well, good night. I mean trying to serve the public trust and bring criminals to justice. The nerve of some people. All right, enough of this soap opera. Is there anything going on in the main story? You know, the one about the Night of the Bloody Apes that so far seems to be all about wrestling? What is it, Doctor? Nothing, calm down. You're the one that tapped him on the shoulder, you dick. The operation seems to have gotten Julio's leukemia under control, but there are some unintended side effects, like adult onset film dissolve. <laughs> Yeah, I don't blame you, Julio. If I had an operation and woke up looking like Ron Perlman, I'd be pissed off, too. On the plus side, it does seem to have added about 50 pounds of muscle to him, which means it's time to hit the town and find some ladies. <laughs> Chica muy caliente! Ugh, I don't think I like this director's cut of Max Muna more. It is way too dark and violent. Inquisition. What? I haven't made a Python reference in a while, and I thought it was time. Come on, Doc. Put a stop to Rape Ape here before he does any more damage. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently the hulking, bloodthirsty monster makes roughly the same sound as an adorable cartoon sheep. <laughs> what plans do you have now, Master? None. This is horrible. Perhaps if I put a giraffe's heart in, maybe that would work better. What is more probable is that the heart of a gorilla is much too potent for any human, and the volume of blood to the cerebrum damaged the superior parts. Okay, movie, if you're gonna throw this much bullshit at me, I am gonna need a little help. Oh. Oh, shit, I forgot to buy limes. It might last for days, or hours, or minutes. Are you trying to tell me that at any moment, Julio might return to normal? Julio! It's pronounced Julio! God, I'm from Saskatchewan and I know that! So having realized his mistake, Croman decides to give Julio a human heart transplant. Why he didn't just do that in the first place, I have no idea, but like I said, I'm not a doctor. And he even decides to use comatose wrestler lady from the beginning. Well, hey, what do you know? Lucy's wrestling really is important to the main story. <sighs> Invert the process. Before the lesion, cerebrum becomes irreparable. Invert the process? I don't understand. Well, that makes two of us. Unfortunately for them, Julio hulks out again and escapes. Arr, wooden boards, no bueno! Arr. Okay. Apparently that guy Julio killed was the sound editor. Actually, most of the midsection of the movie is Julio raping women and going on a killing spree. He even kills Mexican Wayne Newton. <laughs> Bet you he didn't see that coming. What's going on here? I guess somebody got mugged over there, in the park. Yeah, if by mugged you mean got brutally murdered. I guess it is pretty easy to confuse the two. I shouldn't be too quick to judge, though. Apparently, murder isn't a very serious crime in Mexico. Who yelled? I did, sir. There around the corner, there's a man, and he's dead. 
Okay, thanks, lady. Whoa, whoa, movie, ease up on the nudity, will ya? It's gratuitous not to mention offensive. Please, cut to something more acceptable. Well, the surgery seems to be going okay, but how is Dr. Crawman going to explain the missing woman? Of course, the woman might have been a sleepwalker. A sleepwalker? Any sleepwalker gets up. And she could have jumped out of the window and escaped. Or got lost. You know, say what you want about that explanation, but it actually makes more sense than pretty much everything else in this movie. For example, check out this amazing police work. Those lines on the first print are human, but the others aren't. But they're not made by two different persons. It's that the two of them are made by the same person or thing. Okay, so you have two completely different sets of fingerprints, but you're sure that they came from the same person because... I'm gonna go with science? What I'm going to say just might sound absurd. No! That whatever committed these atrocities is a beast, yes. But a horrible half-beast, half-human. It's more probable that of late, more and more you're watching on your television, many of those pictures of terror. Ah, yes, pictures of terror. Or perhaps their sister genre, movies of science not factual. Well, Julio seems to be recovering nicely. Although considering this movie's logic, he'll probably transform into some weird half-female wrestling monster. Yeah, probably something like that. I'll be here, Master. Don't close the door. Leave it open. So that you can hear him just in case he needs you. Also, we don't have the budget for him to break down a door. By the way, what's Lucy up to? Hook it up to the dressing rooms in the arena. It's urgent. I'll say it's urgent. This actress has nudity in her contract and there's only 15 minutes left. Baby, why don't you come out here and join us? Yeah, turns out the main plot's about some killer ape man and not your wrestling career. Speaking of which, how's Julio doing? Okay, Julio, I know you're glad to be human again, but could you at least wait a little while before jerking off under the covers? But it turns out masturbation leads to more than just hairy palms. It also leads to dead henchmen. Decapitation! Oh my god. Julio. For the last time, it's Julio. Maybe if you pronounced his name properly, he'd listen to you. It's your father, Julio. <laughs> Oh, right in the awkward edit. Fortunately for Crawlman, Julio decides to spare his life, which is more than I can say for this guy. <laughs> oh, Julio, no! Don't you know how much that toupee cost? By the way, nice outfit on our monster here. I've always said button-up pajamas are the most terrifying kind of sleepwear. Well, it looks like it's up to Arturo's stellar police work to catch him. He's been murdered. Yeah, thanks for that, Columbo. Come on, Arturo, you gotta stop Julio before he kills again. Oop, too late. Hmm. Let's see, I already used the decapitation clip. There's gotta be some other pop culture reference I can use here. I'm crushing your head! I'm crushing your head! I'm crushing your head! The last part of the movie apparently decides it wants to be King Kong, with Julio kidnapping a little girl and climbing a hospital. So it's up to Arturo to save her. Yeah, take that, you fucking rope. Well, maybe Dr. Crawman will have better luck reasoning with Julio. Julio. All right, fine, whatever. His name's fucking Julio. Give me the child. That's right. He dropped the kid! Shoot him! I lied to you. I didn't use a bonobo's heart like I said I would. Blah, blah, blah. He tampered in God's domain. Come on, let's wrap this up. The desire to save a son from death was the cause of so many people suffering. It's unfortunate. Really sad. Hey, honey, did your wrestling ever factor into the movie's plot in any significant way? Um, I don't think so. Okay, just checking. So do I recommend this trashy, exploitive, and incredibly poorly made movie? Well... This is a show about cult films? Well, this is a prime example of one right here. It's obscure, it's foreign, it's got gore, it's got nudity, and most of all, it's chock full of the kind of batshit insanity that only these types of films can give. 
It goes without saying that this movie is not for everybody, but if you consider yourself a connoisseur of trash cinema, I say check this one out. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Thank you.